Let's make a super awesome two-story wireless fish pond that's also going to light up at night. If you've seen any of the other videos I've done, you know that it starts off with some resin planters. These are AR brand. This big one is around 41 liters and the smaller one is about 25 liters. I'm gonna start by drilling a hole through part of this one. It's gonna help me get the nasty water out of this primarily because the lip on these are a little weird. This is also a hole that can serve as an overflow if this thing's getting rained on a bunch. I'm also gonna drill out another hole that goes all the way through because I wanna have the ability to maybe add some LED lights around this kind of like what we did in the last patio pond build, but that's not gonna be the primary light source here. We're gonna do something a little bit different here in a bit. Now these planters in particular have this weird tag that goes all the way through, so we're gonna have to remove that and then patch it up with a little bit of silicone or else it's totally gonna leak. Pretty simple though, you just gotta do this and then of course wait about 24 hours for it to dry. I wanna lift this pond up off the ground a little bit. I think it's gonna to help to just make it a little bit more unique and it's gonna make it a lot easier to do water changes when I have to do those, which is pretty infrequent. I mostly am doing this because I think it's gonna look really cool. So I took that smaller planter and used that as the base, flipped it upside down, of course, and now I need to attach these two things together because I don't wanna just gamble with the weight of the water holding it in place. This could be really straightforward, but there's a little bit of gap in between the planters. You know, the bottoms are caved in a little bit. At the time, I thought I probably should use something that expands a little bit to maybe hold it a little bit better. So originally I was thinking, I have this Bondo, I'm using it for a different project, maybe I could use that. In hindsight, I totally should have used something like Liquid Nails, I think that would have been the best choice. But what I had at the time was some of the great stuff, expanding foam that didn't have the appropriate nozzle on it. I decided to use that. And spoiler alert, it ended up working, but it was a little sketchy, so I sprayed some on and then just tried to center this big pot as best I could on the one on the bottom. And then we just had to wait and make sure that this was actually gonna work. In theory, it totally should. And like I said, it did end up working, but it took a little bit of trial and error and there was probably a better way to do this. It's not super important that this holds super tight or anything. It was more just a peace of mind thing. And it would be nice to not have to worry about this thing falling over at all. But if you take a tumble and fall into it, it's gonna get knocked over no matter what. So after, I don't know how long, like 12 hours, I came back, checked everything out. This thing felt pretty sturdy, so I was ready to move on. I made sure that this thing was level front to back. We got lucky that it's sitting on a spot that was already pretty level, so we're pretty much good to go. Now we can move on to the first step of actually setting this up, which is gonna be the substrate. I'm using, of course, Monterey Beach Sand, what I use on pretty much everything these days. Made sure to wash it out really good. And here's a tip on just getting really clear water right off the bat. Wash the heck out of your sand, put it in a bucket, and then let water run on it for just depends like 10 minutes 15 minutes get it to where it's super clear with the hose running and so when you go to fill up your pond with this stuff it's gonna be super clear no matter what I then just added the sand in wasn't really paying that much attention to how much I was putting in spread it out a little bit and the center went pretty much all the way up my finger and that was plenty for this setup we're gonna try and use as many pond plants from existing ponds as we can so looking at the first pond that we set up we had a bunch of stuff that we can use I'm gonna try and use some of this Mondo grass. We also have what I think is dwarf aquarium lily at the bottom. And then we have this creeping Jenny that's growing out. And I think we can make some cuts from this and make something really cool. In any case, it's time to now fill up our pond. We're just gonna use you know water straight from the hose. Look at how clear this is right off the bat. Again, washing that sand goes a long way. Don't forget to dechlorinate. We got our handy dandy Fritz Pond Guard to do the job. This stuff will get the chlorine out of the water. It'll also get chloramine out if you have to deal with that. Plant number one that we're gonna put in is gonna be that aquarium lily. This is, I think, from Aquarium Co-op. It's a pot that we just threw in this pond a while back and it actually did well. I'm also gonna harvest some dwarf sag out of this pond because it's one of the best plants, I think, for this type of setting. And then that Mondo grass. I don't know exactly what we're gonna do with that at this point, but we'll figure it out. I just dropped the aquarium lily in place, try and highlight it a little bit, followed by planting some of that dwarf sag. Super easy, you just use your fingy and poke it down into the substrate. Hopefully this dwarf sag gets enough light to really carp it up and spread around, but we'll have to see. Next, I made a trip inside because I know I have some other things I wanna use. So we have some baby tears and a tiger lotus that we can pull from our guppy tank. I think those might make a good addition, we'll see. And then here's an example of what I wanna do with the creeping Jenny. This is hanging off of the light up pond that we made last week. Not sure how much these roots are interfering with my rice fish egg depositing stuff that I'm doing, but I'm not seeing any here and hopefully we'll have a good experience with these in the new pond. I just take some cuttings from the existing plant, try and get as much root action as I can, and then drape them over the new pond. I think these stems are just gonna add a huge value to the pond. It definitely makes it look a lot better. This stuff is kind of like Rotala in that it likes to grow roots, 
even towards the beginning of the plant or the new growth of the plant. I'm just trying to make sure we got enough in the water so that way it can keep itself hydrated, but we'll see what happens here. I definitely need a way to hide these roots. I don't want them just floating around all over the place, but I have a solution for that that's on the way. Meanwhile, back at the pond that we pillaged for plants, it's looking super good, man. These fish look super, super healthy this year. I'm really happy with it. We give them some food and they say thank you for being able to see the sun again. So this new pond that we just set up actually gets very little direct sunlight. So it looks like it is right now, but it's actually kind of under this gazebo. It's getting light, but it's diffused light. So it's definitely chilled out. And I think it's gonna help the longevity of this one a lot. Our Creeping Jenny is doing okay. It's going through a little bit of a shock here. Probably not all the roots are in the water that need to be. Everything's going the way I hoped it would. And now we can get ready to add our fish. The Midnight Madakas are probably excited to get out of this bare bones tank. I already pulled out the breeding mops. They're all ready to go to put into the new pond. We just have to pull these guys out. So I got my handy dandy little catcher cup thing, AKA the brine shrimp hatchery thing, which makes it perfect to transfer fish. So we'll just scoop up some water. Maybe we'll get a couple fish. Hang it on the side like that, transfer them in, and we'll go put them in the pond. Then I can finally get this tank out of here, get our rack set up, got a little bit of prep work to do, and then we can figure out finally how to make sure that our baby fish are in safe environments. So that's gonna be the next step of this whole process, but let's finish this pond. Check the temp here of our new pond. It's looking like only about 72. The water that they were in, pretty much the same. These fish are super hardy, as you probably already know, so it's not really a big deal. They should be able to take a mild change in temperature like that uh, without any issues. No pond, I repeat, no pond is complete without a little bit of sylvinia. So this is a great floating plant. It's gonna help absorb nitrogen. It's gonna grow like crazy. I followed that up with some fresh breeding mops to hopefully get some eggs from our rice fish. And now we get to add kind of the last accessory, which is that light. So this is actually like a light that's meant for book reading. It's totally wireless. You charge it up and it's actually strong enough to light this thing up. You're gonna see it in just a second, but it's kind of the perfect solution. It's exactly what I was looking for. It's got a clip, obviously, so we can just clip it onto the pond. Super happy to find this thing. At this point, our fish are still getting used to their new home. They're swimming primarily down at the bottom, just checking everything out, making sure that they're safe. I went ahead and grabbed some of that Mondo grass and I actually got some of the Pothocary clips that I use for holding plants into aquariums to hold these plants and it actually worked out pretty good. Unfortunately, these clips are meant for rimless aquariums so they're not quite big enough to make a fit over this pond, but I do have my guy sending me some more of these things that are meant for rim tanks that should be big enough to fit around it. In the meantime, we're just gonna have to balance them, but I think this thing is looking really good. We definitely needed a plant that was more up out of the pond and towards the back just to make it look kind of more cohesive, I guess. This little light does a terrific job of lighting up even this pretty deep pond at night. I do only turn on the light when I come out at night, so it's not running all day long. I think it would run out of juice pretty quick. I think it definitely is better than just having the LEDs around the rim, which works kind of okay, you know, because they're not angled down towards the bottom of the pond like this one is. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this. I mean, it's super cool to come out here in the evening, turn it on, enjoy the pond for a few hours, and then, you know, of course, turn it off and doing it this way, not leaving it on all the time. I mean, I'm out here for a whole week of doing that and it's not dying, so pretty happy. It even has a couple different temperatures of light that you can mess around with. I like just using the, you know, the daylight version or the whitest light. I think that illuminates the pond the best, but it's cool to have the different features. So another reason why this pond is pretty cool is because it's super easy to do a water change on it. I don't expect we're gonna need to do too many of them throughout the summer, like probably only do a handful of them, but it is really nice to be able to easily start a siphon and drain the water out anywhere, like just shoot it into the flower bed. Doing a water change on a pond that sits on the ground like this is pretty difficult unless you have, you know, lower elevation nearby. But even with this one, if I do a short siphon, you know, I can I can make it work. It might be a little tough to get the junk off the bottom. The siphon's gonna be super slow, but it'll work. Even just having your pond up like a couple inches on something like this, I got these recently at Lowe's, it's gonna help you out a ton, even if it's just a couple inches. It's been about a week since we set this thing up. Some of these random pieces didn't have enough roots in the water, so they kind of fizzled out, but everything's looking pretty good. I'm gonna try and keep the Sylvania to a minimum in this one, just because I wanna be able to see down to the bottom of it. Our Midnight Madoc 
because they're getting hungry. We gotta feed them here in just a sec, but the stability of this thing seems to be okay. You know, I can wiggle it and it moves. That's gonna happen no matter what. Like, even if we attach this really, really good with those liquid nails or something like that, it would still wobble a little bit. I think it's gonna be fine, as long as I don't have too many micheladas when I'm barbecuing and forget this thing is here. All of our plants are doing really good. The dwarf aquarium lily already has a bunch of its pads up at the top of the water hoping that the tiger lotus down there will do the same, but who knows? Not sure if it's doing super great. Maybe it wants more light. I showed it earlier, but this thing is pretty much, I mean, it's not in the shade, but it's getting this diffuse light through the gazebo thing here. And honestly, I think that's kind of the move for these ponds. I had to scoot this pond over a little bit just because the plants were getting bleached out. Like if we move it over here where it originally was, it just gets a little bit too much direct sunlight. And on a super hot day like today, it's just a little bit too much for the plants. The fish can take it, but even with this top cover, the sylvania spreading over the top of the tank, it's still gonna be just a little bit too much light. So I mean, if you live in a place like Arizona, Florida, Texas, or anywhere else where it gets super hot during the summer, I think you can still totally do setups like these. I think you should probably just keep them in an area that's shaded all the time, or at least in a diffused light situation like what I have with this thing. I think you're gonna be okay. You know, when you set it up, maybe wait a little bit to add fish, see how the plants do. If they respond good, then something like rice fish are probably gonna be fine. Check the temperature of your pond in the morning, in the afternoon, and then at night to get an idea of how hot that water's heating up. And as long as it's not like 95 plus degrees at any point, then you're probably gonna be fine with some rice fish. These are super hardy fish. I think they actually really like the temperature swings over the course of the day. The rice fish seem to do just fine even in the upper 80s, like right now. The surface temp here is only about 80 degrees, but it will get hotter. We're still only about halfway through the day. Forgot I could show this one off, getting direct sunlight the surface temp of this water is about 88 degrees it's obviously cooler as you go down into the pond a little bit but the fish are just fine if your backyard is susceptible to things like a lot of cats or raccoons then it's a different story you're gonna have to figure out something maybe cover your pond in barbed wire I don't know that is definitely a limiting factor that I know a lot of people have and I've had in the past with different places that I've lived so that's something that I can't really give you a ton of advice on but I hope this video at least got you thinking about a pond to set up, it's super fun. If you're a fish tank person, you gotta try out some ponds in the summer. It's an awesome project no matter how you do it, and I think no matter what you create, you're gonna have some fun with it. But we're about halfway through the summer now, so if you haven't done it yet, that was probably one of the last chances you have to really see it develop. We got a couple more ponds to set up here for pond season seven, eight, nine, whatever this is. I'm looking forward to it. We gotta get our koi madakas out here. Anyways, I think that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. It's super sweaty out here, and wearing the lab coat is and helping so i'm gonna get inside and chill out a little bit and we'll see you in the next one let me know if you have a really cool patio pond in the comments we'll see you in the next one